Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I was talking to an old long lost friend the other day, and was astonished to find out how diametrically opposed our worldviews had become. A worldview is simply the lens from which you view the world. It's like an outlook, or perspective on life. Anyway, when my friend and I were kids, we seemed to have so much in common. But back in the day, there wasn't much to think about except school, girls, and food. Now as adults, school has turned into work, girls have turned into families, and food isn't even on my radar anymore. There is so much more on our plates now, that our focus has had to shift to a more global perspective. With all that's going on in the world, we have no choice but to broaden our horizons. But when it comes to worldviews, there are as many variations, as there are people. But they all fall into just two major camps. You either believe in God, or you don't. So as I was talking to my old friend, I was disappointed to find out that he had fallen into the latter camp of atheism. Politically, he had also become quite the socialist. As we discussed our different perspectives, he became fairly agitated with my unwillingness to share his ideologies. I told him, man I've spent my entire life studying everything I could get my hands on, and from all the knowledge that I have acquired from years of investigation and inquiry, I have no choice but to accept the obvious. God is real. For some reason, that concept was totally foreign to him. He viewed God as a fantasy, and the Bible was a myth. To him, the government was his savior. To him, government was the higher power. When I gave him the top 10 scientific evidences for the existence of God, he came up with an excuse to explain them all away, even though his explanations defied logic, and all known scientific laws. As I listened to him try to dissolve what I know to be a reality, I remembered something my pastor had told me years prior. He said there is no evidence that will convince someone, who does not want, to believe. I could see it in my friend's eyes. He just flat out did not want to consider any other ideas. He had made up his mind, and no one was going to convince him otherwise. In a last ditch effort to get my friend to consider the possibility of God's existence, I simply asked him if he had ever actually looked at the evidence. He said there is no such thing. I told him that I used to be just like him, I had made up my mind, without actually looking at the evidence. That's called conjecture. In a court of law, if you try to draw a conclusion before all the evidence has been presented, that's conjecture. So I had a choice to make. I could tell if I pressed the matter, my friend was going to bolt. His temperament and body language were shouting, exit. He was in fight or flight mode, and leaning toward flight. I guess the topic had hit a hot button or two, and he was clearly weighing our friendship in the balance. At that point, you just have to decide what's more important, the friendship, or that person's eternal destiny. Worldviews have consequences. When the time comes to set your body aside, when your spirit steps through death's door, what awaits the unbeliever is not pleasant. That's not a threat or manipulation, it's reality. Nobody has to like that fact. If I walk past your house, and I see that it's on fire, I have no choice but to inform you of the impending danger. If you deny the fact that your house is on fire, and refuse to exit the premises, no one can protect you from the consequences of your unwise decision. When God extends a hand of fellowship and an offer of redemption, we all have only four options. The wise will say, yes. The ignorant or uninformed will say, what? The foolish will say, later. The evil will say, never. Just like my friend, you too have a decision to make. You will fall into the camp of either believer, or unbeliever. The choice is yours. God gives you the freedom to choose. As weird as this may seem, I believe that God had you watch this video. He loves you, and he is reaching out to you. This may be the first time you have ever heard this, it may be your 100th time, just don't let it be the last time. If you tell God no enough times, 
he eventually will let you have your way. As we parted ways, I asked my friend if I could pray with him. He stunned me by saying yes. He said he had been struggling with anxiety. I shared with him some verses from the Bible about how God can bring us not only peace, but even a new purpose in life. When we were done praying a brief prayer, we hugged, and I saw tears in his eyes. The seed of hope, had been planted. We promised to stay in touch, and we both drove away on our motorcycles. He headed back to New York, and I headed back to the Rocky Mountains. The reality is we all have our own lives. Our lives are basically made up of choices. Your choices will affect your future, just as much as they affect your present reality. I am not trying to be pretentious, I am genuinely concerned for your destiny. All I ask is, that you expand your definition of future, to include, eternity. Peace be unto you and your house. Yes. What? Later. Never. What will be your response?